What's up, Blue Jay fans? It's Rob Scott of the Jay Talking Podcast. I'm back with another game day recap. I spent the day at the beach today. So I only got to listen to the last four innings. I was enjoying my sons instead today. Although I was, my heart was still with the Blue Jays. Don't tell my sons I said that. I did make a nice little picture while I was at the cottage, though. A little, uh, I took a picture of me and my son pointing at the sky and then photoshopped a little Blue Jays cloud in. <laughs> Very clever. Very clever. <laughs> uh, all right. The hell went on today? So the Jays came in 39-31 versus the AL East leading Baltimore Orioles. The Jays were tied with Boston and only one game back of Baltimore. And looking to jump into a tie for the lead on the hill. The inconsistent. The sometimes ugly. The sometimes magnificent. R.A. Dickey was 4-7. and seven With a 4.16 ERA coming in. I'll talk about him a little bit later on. He was going against Giovanni Gallardo, who was 1-1 one one with a 7 ERA in 18 innings. Not sure what fuck happened to him, uh, but I'm assuming he's not just throwing 18 innings because he has other things to do. The Jays offense has jumped into the number 6 spot in MLB in a hurry. They were only 17th maybe 7 days ago. So they have put on a wicked display of offense in a very short period of time. Uh, their pitching staff is 8th. So both of those marks now, you know, in the top 10 in MLB. Baltimore with the 10th best offense and the 17th ranked pitching staff. So we get to the scoring in the bottom of the first. Jonathan Shoop with a double. The mighty Manny Machado with an RBI double to score him. He advanced to third on an error. And the uh, Ugly R.A. Dickey Knuckleball. He scored on a pass off. Made it 2 nothing. Baltimore. Top of the third, Ezekiel Carrera. With a home run. He's filling in for Jose Batista. Who's on the 15-day L, day DL. Because he put his toe in his mouth. He had a 397-foot shot to deep center. Made it 2-1. But Baltimore scored again. They wasted no time. Jonathan Shoop with a home run. 379 feet. What a pussy. 379 feet. Carreras went 397. Skinny. Top of the fourth. Pilar walked. The score now 3-1. and one. Devin Travis with a double. An RBI double. 175 footer. Made it 3-2. Close game. Now into the bottom of the eighth. Jason Grilly in and Shoop again with a single. He was deadly today. Manny Machado with another hit. He had a single. And then Shoop scored, scored on Trumbo's fielder's choice RBI. Jay's offense had seven hits today. Two runs, one home run, six walks, nine Ks. And they left 15 men on base. The heroes who lived to play another game. Ezekiel Carrera, one for three with a home run. Eddie, one for two with two walks. Productive. Saunders, one for three with another walk. Travis, two for four with a double. Tulo's return, he was 0 for four with a K. The Baltimore offense had nine hits, walked three times, struck out four, and they scored four runs. Two of them earned. But they also left 15 men on base. So we can say the Jays' offense had chances, but so did Baltimore's. They both left with a ton of men on base. The offensive side for Baltimore, Jonathan Shope, 3 for 4, 3 runs, a home run, a ribby. Manny Machado, 3 for 4 with a run. And Mark Trumbo, the home run, uh, the AL leading home run guy, who's over 3 with an RBI. Pitching. R.A. Dickey fell to 4 and 8. He threw 6 innings of, again, I, I say it every time, what Dickey does. He's average to slightly above. And he had, uh, you know, a solid outing, but he put nine men on base, three runs, uh, two earned. Struck out two, gave up a home run. Jesse Chavez with a clean inning, struck out a batter. He's been very good this year, 245 ERA and 121 whip. I boned on him a little bit, but he's, uh, he's played very well. Jason Grilly with an inning, two hits, a run, a walk, and a K. Baltimore, Giovanni Gallardo. I don't have any stats to look to 
to, to prove this. I live in satellite country, so my internet signal comes and goes whenever it chooses. And I wanted to see if he was extra tough against Toronto because it certainly feels like it when we face him. Uh, he did get the win today. I couldn't find those stats, but let's just say it's a fact he's tough against Toronto. And that fact is based on my gut feeling. So stick that up your ass. He threw five innings. Gave up five hits, two runs, four walks, five Ks. Michael Gibbons. Michael Gibbons, who spells his name M-Y-C-H-A-L. Because his parents didn't love him. I don't understand why they spelt it that way. M-Y-C-H-A-L. My Chell. That's what they sh that, maybe, that's, maybe that's how you pronounce it. My Chell. That's how I'm going to forever for now pronounce it because it's, it's not Michael. Michael Gibbons with two innings, a hit, and a K. Brad Brack. Michael Brack. That should be his name. He's, that certainly sounds like a, a German serial killer. But anyway, Bratch threw an inning, struck out two. Zach Britton had a crazy inning, but... Did get out of it. He put three men on base with a hit, two walks, and a K. And went, picked up his 21st save. He's 21 for 21. Which is perfect by my math. So, what do we want to talk about a little bit quickly? R.A. Dickey, 4 and 8 now. 408 ERA, 133 whip. I think we need to get past the feelings we have with R.A. Dickey. Every time he has a loss, people hate him, and they want to point out what he is, which is inconsistent. Okay? That isn't fake. That is a real thing. Um, but he's weirdly consistent as well. I mean, look at his record. 14 and 13. 14 and 13. 11 and 11. Now 4 and 8. He's 47. Uh, excuse me, 43 and 44 is a Blue Jay, which is where he should be. He's a 500 pitcher. He's a back end of the rotation 500 pitcher. But that's good. There's no number three starters in the five spot of anybody's rotation in MLB. We need to stop hating on Dickey for what he is. He is a good, solid, back of the rotation pitcher. Look, if you take away the trade that happened... And probably where most people's ill feelings of him come about. If you can remove that from your head and just say, okay, here's a guy we got for free or on the free agent market or whatever, by whatever means we didn't have to give up anything. Here's your number five starter. Most of us would be very, very happy with what R.A. Dickey is doing. I don't think we can separate ourselves, many of us, from the fact of from what we traded away to get him. And the fact that he's been a 500 pitcher here. But, you know, should we have expected a lot more? I don't know. Did Alex expect a lot more than this when he came over? I mean, his ERA is 421, 371, 391, 408. Whips, 1.24, 1.23, 1.19, 1.33. Pose and batting average, 242, 233, 244, 249. You know, I say he's inconsistent because he's inconsistent as hell from start to start, but he's wildly consistent, oddly enough. By looking at those numbers, he's got a, a career 3.97 ERA with Toronto and a 1.23 whip. Those are very good back end of the rotation numbers, maybe even a number four. Those are very good numbers to stick there. You know, if you know you're getting that, you can punch that in every year. And you're going to get out that, a 3.97 ERA, a nice low whip. He's probably been a little bit unfortunate with his record of 43 and 44. He probably, you know, should be better than that. That's not necessarily his fault. But he's also not far from being a 500 pitcher. That's what he is. But he's a good 500 pitcher. So let's stop beating on him. You know, and, and he comes with the package of Toldy. So that's the other thing uh, that I, you know, that that sometimes I have problems with and certainly a lot of other people have problems with. You're almost throwing away a body just to have him as his 
personal catcher. Um, you know, talk about uh, Baltimore and Boston, and they're a lot less scary to me. Now, you know, as we approach the, the midway mark and you look at their offenses and their pitching staffs compared to the Jays, the Blue Jays are just as good as they are with the team they have right now, and, they, and, and that's a team with holes that can get a lot better. Um, the Jays have the 6th ranked offense and the 8th best pitching compared to Baltimore's 10th offense and 17th ranked pitching how are these two even close I don't know what the run differential is let me see my internet is finally working oh, I don't have time or the interest I want to hang out with my wife um, Boston was the first best offense Still with a good lead, but the 18th ranked pitching, that's not going to get you. We know that having a pitching staff that sucky is not going to get it done in the playoffs. I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm not as scared as those of those two now. They need to improve their pitching, or their, need, or their pitching they have needs to improve. Either way, uh, the Jays will overlap both of them, which is a good thing. And finally, just to talk about Carrera. Uh, is in for Batista. Why can't we have Dalton Pompey come up now? Why can't he be part of the solution for the time that Jose Batista is is on the DL? I'm not saying, you know, if there's not a roster spot for Dalton Pompey to at least play two, three times a week, then yes, he should still be in AAA honing his craft. But we're presented with an opportunity now to platoon Carrera and Pompey for two weeks. Why do we not take that opportunity? Why is Dalton Pompey, why can't he get an at-bat here? This seems to be the absolutely perfect ideal spot to bring him up and give him some play for that short time. And if it's not going to turn into anything more than that, then you send him back down. That's not going to shatter his confidence right now. If he knows what he's coming up for, send him back down. Why can't he get two weeks of run here? Platooning with Carrera. I don't know. It seems, I don't know. I, I, I'm Certainly the, the organization has their reasons, but as a guy who knows way more than they do, that being me, I don't agree with it. I would like to get their phone number and send them a nasty phone call. I'd like to prank them, actually. Uh, so tomorrow's game at 135 Eastern, Marcus Stroman. 6-2 and two with a 4.76 ERA versus Chris Tillman, who's 9-1 and one with a 2.87 ERA. So that's going to be tough for us. Stroman is coming off a good start, but still that's going to be a tough matchup to try and take this series. Hopefully we don't fall three back. We move into one back of the leaders and go on from there. We're consistently gaining ground. Let's keep going. Thank you for joining me. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Boom, bap, boom, 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 boom. Bum 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 bum